And joining us now for an in-depth discussion on the Ukraine ceasefire and the country's political future is Director at the Center on Peace and Liberty, Dr. Ivan Elin. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you expect uh, the ceasefire to stick this time around? And what is different this time around? And did President Poroshenko give in to all of this because he felt like he was backed up against the wall and he couldn't win on the ground? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, he was winning. And then, of course, Russia sent troops and forces in there uh, surreptitiously and uh, turned the tide. So uh, he is backed up. And I think uh, it's very interesting that Russia agreed to this because usually the, the side that has the advantage doesn't do that. But I think uh, we'll see if it holds. I'm not sure that uh, both, both parties have an interest at this point in stopping the fighting, but we'll see. Hopefully it will. Russia wants to have um, you know, the, each region to have their own foreign policy. Is this realistic? Well, he's achieved that in Moldova and uh, Georgia. And one of the reasons he's doing this, I think, is because you remember that he's doing this out of weakness because he had a friendly government in Ukraine that was overthrown. And now he has an unfriendly government. So what he's trying to do is keep Ukraine from NATO, uh, from go joining NATO. And of course, of any country, uh, Ukraine is the most important in that area for Russia. And it's very important for them not to have a hostile uh, Ukraine. So tell us what's on the table, uh, a long-term ceasefire, uh, withdrawal of Russian army, and a wall along the border. Is this pretty much what's at stake, what they want? Well, that's what the Ukrainian prime minister would like. I'm not sure you're not going to have a, some sort of a situation like Georgia where there's Russian forces in part of the country uh, and, you know, sitting there permanently, more or less, because I think uh, what they want to do is uh, Putin would like to achieve enough aut autonomy where these regions of Russia or uh, Ukraine, which is the industrial heartland of Ukraine, could uh, veto any uh, Ukrainian uh, desire to get into NATO. And I think that's one of the underlying reasons right. that, of, of Putin's objectives. OK, so you pretty much just outlined what you feel like the political future of the southeast region will look like. Yes, unfortunately, I think it is true. I, I don't agree with Putin's uh, uh, invasion, and that's what that's what it is, because it 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 does disrupt things when you any anytime any country, whether the United States or Russia or anybody else, violates the sovereignty of a country. That's that upsets the international system because that's what it's based on, and uh, that's what the UN uh, uh, criteria for for uh, uh, aggression and that sort of thing is if you if you invade another country not in self-defense, and that's what's happened in this case. Of course, Putin says that he is not backing the separatists with arms and weaponry, that, that he is merely supporting them. We want to state that. But where is he getting all this confidence? And he sort of um, just kind of brushes off the idea of more sanctions. He says the ones that they have in place have not worked. Where is he getting this? Because he has a lot of people lined up against him. Well, he has a lot of surface bravado, but Russia is a declining power, and he's trying to salvage what he can out of Ukraine, which is the real, the real uh, deal. And he's being very aggressive in salvaging this, but I think he, he thinks he has to be. This is Russia's near abroad. This is their sphere of influence. And traditionally, big powers have had a sphere of influence. The United States has one in Latin America that we police quite uh, avidly. And so he's doing the same thing, and he sees NATO going into the Baltics and headed further east into Croatia and Romania and all these other countries that are near uh, Russia. And you, you forget that, uh, well, we, at least we do here in the United States, that Russia lost 25 million in World War II, and they've been invaded by Napoleon, Hitler. Uh, they've had problems with the Poles in the past, et cetera. So Russia has had a lot of history of problems, and they want a security buffer. And I think, uh, you know, you can read this as naked aggression, but usually it's a bit more complex than that. Why is he, um, what, what would he have to lose by saying, yes, I'm, I'm arming the separatists? Because he makes no bones about the fact that he is supporting them. Well, I think he's, a, he's very clever in that he doesn't, he, he keeps it clouded up so people can't just make the, the get the idea that he's commit, committing naked aggression, which he, he sort of is, right? And maybe defensive aggression, but, uh, you know, salvaging what he can out of Ukraine. But he's doing it in a very clever manner. Uh, countries uh, do diplomatic sleight of hand to hide their hide what they're doing all the time. And he's very adept at it. And he's very, he's very um, you know, in your face right now. So I think, uh, you know, the, the, the West is trying to sanction him with economic sanctions. And the sanctions uh, are having an effect on the economy. But a lot of times nationalism trumps uh, even money-making. So that's what's happening here, I think.
Dr. Ivan Elin, thank you so much for your time and insight. As always, we appreciate it. Thank you.